it's Coach M here. Is your teenager getting underneath your skin? Are they talking back to you, telling you no when you ask them to do something? Or constantly rolling their eyes and acting like the world only revolves around them? If so, you'll wanna make sure that you lean into today's video because I'm gonna give you the hard truth about where that disrespect is coming from and what you can do about it. It's coming up. Okay, you've had it. You're constantly battling with your teenager over simple tasks like having them clean their room or do their homework or get off their phone for more than five minutes. You ask them to do one tiny thing that they already should be doing and they give you attitude and pushback. They may even raise their voice at you and roll their eyes and tell you no, which pisses you off to the point that you take away their phone or their driving privileges and then eventually they cave in and do what you ask them to do. But the whole cycle repeats itself over and over and over. You feel like what you're currently doing just really isn't working. And you would be right. The first thing we as parents have to understand is where our teenager's disrespect is really coming from. Disrespect equals disconnection. And disconnection is the absence of the three elements that create connection, which are empathy, curiosity, and vulnerability. So you have to ask yourself these questions. What does my heart-to-heart -heart connection with my teenager really look like? And what am I doing every day to build and nurture that connection? Now, if your answer includes any variation of, I do so much for them, I take them everywhere they wanna go, like to the mall to meet their friends, soccer practice every night, I allow their friends to come over and hang out, I want you to stop and ask yourself if doing any of these physical, tangible things is enough to create the heart-to-heart -heart connection that you desire with your teenager. Remember, disrespect is occurring with your teenager because that heart-to-heart -heart connection either doesn't exist right now or hasn't been nurtured and isn't growing. I'm going to tell you right now, when you work on developing that heart-to-heart -heart connection, which means that your teenager feels heard, seen, and valued, the disrespect will dissipate. It will no longer exist at all. Imagine that for a moment. That's exactly what you want. For there to be peace in your home, for your relationship with your teenager to be stronger, deeper, and actually enjoyable, right? Well, the first key in achieving this is through vulnerable communication. This is about you getting in touch with your heart first before talking to your teenager so that you're challenging your fears, you're addressing your triggers before engaging with your teen. You always wanna process your emotions first. By doing this, you reduce the amount of damage that you might cause the relationship. Remember, connection is the ultimate goal here, which eradicates disrespect. If you want the exact steps for processing your emotions the right way, check out the video here or click on the link below in the description. We have to be deliberate in how we create and maintain connection with our kids. It's a continual process, even when they become adults. It's something that we have to constantly work at improving. Part of vulnerable communication is asking yourself the question, are the thoughts I'm having coming from a place of fear or love? Now, parenting from a place of love can be hard to distinguish from parenting out of fear because the parenting dynamic, as you know, is intertwined with both fear and love, much more than any other relationship that we can have with anyone. So we have to become good at teasing the fear out of our thoughts and actions and what's great about vulnerable communication is that we actually express our fear to our teenager. It could sound something like this. I know how badly you wanna to go to the party, but I'm feeling a little scared about it. My fear is that you could be pressured into doing something unsafe. And although I know that you're a leader and not a follower, I also know how easy it can be to try something when everyone else is doing it. And studies show that when teenagers get together, their tolerance for risk increases significantly. I just saw an article about that the other day. So as you can imagine, I'm feeling pretty fearful about this party. I love you so much, and I don't know what I'd do if something happened to you. By communicating this way, you're being vulnerable with your heart. You're letting your teen know your struggle in the situation. And it gives you both an opportunity to have a more heartfelt conversation, which your teenager will respect a whole lot more than you just telling them that they can or can't do something. I plan on doing some future videos on the elements of vulnerable communication and how to implement it every time you talk with your teen. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell so that you get notified when I upload those videos. The second key when dealing with disrespectful behavior is to establish or reestablish your boundaries. If you're constantly trying to appease your teenager, letting them do whatever they want to do, you have perpetuated a sense of entitlement in your team and the disrespectful behavior pops up when they're not getting what they want. 
And the more that you try to appease them, the more you are teaching them that they should feel entitled. If someone always lets you have your way and then all of a sudden they're not letting you have what you want, of course you're gonna become upset. Now just imagine if that happens to someone who has a teenage brain. Those upset feelings will most likely manifest as anger, indignant, rude, disrespectful behavior because they want what they've always gotten and they feel entitled to it. If you haven't done a good job of creating your boundaries around your teen's behavior, then it's time to reestablish those boundaries. Remember, a boundary isn't about what the other person should or shouldn't do. You have absolutely no control over that. Your boundaries are about what you will do when other people are doing what they do. If your teen is raising their voice at you, you simply decide what you will do when that happens and let your teen know. It could look something like this. I refuse to engage with anyone who is raising their voice at me. I deserve to be treated better. So I'm going to remove myself from this conversation, but when you're ready to have a healthy, respectful conversation, please let me know. Again, this isn't about trying to control what your teen is or isn't doing. It's about deciding what you will do in situations where you are being treated poorly or being disrespected. The third key is a big one. Stop giving advice and telling your teenager what to do. Your teen's disrespectful behavior is an indication that they don't feel like you understand them or that you even care to understand them. Let that sink in for just a minute. Can you imagine having a relationship with someone, maybe a boss, a friend, your partner, where you feel like they don't understand you or even care to understand you? That your needs don't really matter? And what you say or do is really inconsequential? Your struggles, your pain, your hardships aren't that big of a deal? Would you have much respect for someone who treated you that way? This is exactly how your teenager feels most of the time. It's sad, but it's true. The quickest way to let your teen know that you care, that their needs are just as important as anyone else's, is to stop telling them what to do. Stop giving them well-meaning advice and instead empower them. Guide them by asking the right questions. If you want more help on the right questions to ask, check out the video here and it's linked in the description below. You wanna get them to think about decisions ahead of time become a better problem solver and actually make the decision they think is best for them, even if it's not what you think they should do. This is tough, I know, but here's the important part. No matter what their decision is, allow the consequences of that decision to play out however it needs to. Giving your teen more autonomy over their decisions allows you to build a culture of mutual respect within your home. Your teen feels respected, feels like their needs are important to you, which in turn helps them to see your needs a little clearer as well. Obviously, this doesn't mean you let your teen do whatever they wanna do, whenever they wanna do it. There are always consequences to every decision that we make, and we have to let those play out for our children without stepping in, without shielding them, without letting them off the hook. So not telling them what to do or giving advice doesn't mean a hands-off approach to parenting. It's actually the complete opposite. It's a full hands-on approach to parenting through guiding not control. If you'd like more tools and strategies on building an amazing relationship with your teenager, just click on the link below and I'll send you some great ones. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with anyone you think may benefit from it. And if you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell to get notified when I upload a new video. Wishing you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.